All right, if you're just waking up with us this morning, uh, parts of our region under a tsunami advisory after a volcanic eruption in the Tonga Islands about 830 last night. Let's go to Fox 13's uh, meteorologist Abby Akone, who's been tracking this and uh, Man, oh man, here we go. Pretty active, active morning for you so far. It's kind of scary. You know, I, I wake up and I'm looking at all of these <laughs> alerts. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So you know what's really good is we have incredible scientists here locally. I mean, the best of the best. We live in a very a dynamic spot when it comes to the threat for earthquakes, volcanoes. Uh, we also have the risk for some tsunamis. I talked about the backyards included in this advisory. And I want to bring in for an interview uh, Dr. Harold Tobin, uh, director of the Pacific Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Uh, Harold, you and I talked this morning about this, but can you essentially break down what is this advisory and what can people expect this morning going forward? Yeah, good morning, Abby. Uh, yeah, a tsunami advisory is in effect for the Washington, Oregon, California coast, as you've been saying. I just looked a minute ago and California stations like Port San Luis are starting to see up to several feet of the tsunami arriving at their site. So it's, it's happening on the West Coast. It will move its way up the West Coast over the span of the next minutes to hours. Um, an advisory um, you know, means that it's not at the level of evacuating regions, but staying, as you said before, off the beaches and harbors and marinas can see really significant surges and sort of currents and rip currents uh, moving in and out of them. We've seen that before in the 2011 Japan tsunami that crossed the ocean. Um, so it's something to take very seriously if you're in, you know, Westport, Grace Harbor region, Long Beach Peninsula, any other coastal area that includes, uh, you know, the sort of low lying areas. That's a really big deal. Uh, you were also saying earlier today that Hawaii seen a couple feet of those tsunami waves lasting for about three hours. So we look at Hawaii. Are we expecting the same for us here on our coast? Yeah, the, the arrival in Hawaii of the surge of water confirms essentially what we anticipate seeing here. It is not likely to be substantially different in size, even though it's traveled, you know, thousands of miles further across the ocean. Tsunami waves are so unique because they can cross entire ocean uh, basin, all of the Pacific, uh, from Tonga to here over the span of this many hours. Um, so several feet is definitely possible in the, in the Pacific coastal areas. Um, it'll dissipate somewhat coming up the straits, but people should still, you know, pay attention uh, in the towns along the straits. And I, I think into Puget Sound will really dissipate and we're unlikely to see significant impact down as far as, you know, Seattle Tacoma region. But um, there is no question that, um, you know, that that this is likely to to arrive. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that, too. I mean, is there any possibility that suddenly Seattle gets upgraded to this advisory at all? Uh, I haven't seen any evidence that that's likely. Those advisories come from the National Tsunami Warning Center. So the, the National Center and the Washington Emergency Management Department would issue any warning like that or advisory. Um, I don't have any reason to anticipate that that's going to happen. And Harold, we know that with earthquakes, there are these like aftershocks. I mean, is there anything to that when it comes to tsunamis or once this advisory gets dropped or redone for this event? Once the advisory gets dropped, we are done with this event. It's important to say, though, that the first surge of water is not the whole story, and tsunamis are very typically many surges over a number of hours. Um, so uh, if you see the water come in and rush back out, it doesn't mean it's over. Um, on the other hand, yeah, I think once the tsunami advisory passes and is, uh, and is canceled, then we can rest assured that it's over for now. The volcano in Tonga that erupted, is, it's a very large eruption, and it's not impossible that it will continue to have additional large explosive eruptions Again, we get many hours of warning, fortunately, because of the, uh, the global network of monitoring that we have. Interesting. So there could be a couple of these little eruptions for that volcano that we've already seen so far. Can you tell me more about that? Lastly, the timing on all of this for everybody in the West Coast, up through the, ca the Canadian coast in Alaska. Are we all starting these waves at the same time? Well, it comes across the ocean, and so it's hitting different parts of the coast at different times, just depending on the distance and how that wave moves across the Pacific. As I said, we're already seeing it actually having arrived in places in Southern California. I expect over the next you know, half hour to a couple of hours, we will see that start to show up in Northern California, Oregon, and then Washington, and then British Columbia. 
Harold, it is so great working with you. I always love the chance getting to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass you along to uh, my co-anchor, Brian Flores. Brian, for any extra questions that you have on this. Yeah, Harold, always good Good to see you. I know that you've done a lot of work over, you went to Japan, uh, what, a couple of years ago to do some work on that Japanese tsunami that happened then. Are you seeing any like uh, similarities to what you saw there to what maybe you're seeing here? Yeah, well, the source, of course, is different. In right. Japan, it was the source was a very large undersea earthquake. Um, this is a volcanic eruption, but both, you know, the cause of the tsunami is that the water suddenly gets displaced over a large area. The similarity is that this is a big enough tsunami to have traveled many thousands of miles all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Um, the eruption was really big. They heard it in New Zealand, you know, more than a thousand miles away, literally uh, audibly heard it. Um, but so the similarity we're going to see is that even though we're far away, and it doesn't sound like much when somebody says one to three feet in a harbor or a marina, because of the way tsunamis come in as a long surge, not a breaking wave, um, it still means there's a hazard and people should take it seriously. Yeah, and Harold, we, we saw some reports uh, from, I, I believe, the National Weather Service, the tsunami alert. They had issued a report saying in Hawaii there were some cases of some boats that were being tossed onto some docks. I don't know if you saw that that tweet as well or that report. Is there something like that expected here along our Washington coastline? Is that something that we can see in our area? Yeah, that potential is real. That is definitely possible. We saw it in 2011 uh, along you know, our coast and the west coast of the U.S. with the Japan tsunami. Um, if folks are liveaboards in harbors or marinas, they should take it seriously and, and get off the boat, out, off the piers, and up to higher ground uh, above, the, above that water level in the harbor. Same for beaches, jetties. People want to go down and take photos or watch the tsunami arrive. I really don't recommend that. Um, we saw a loss of life in California during the Japan tsunami in 2011. Yeah, I, re I remember that as well. And then lastly, uh, for me, Harold, I mean, I know that we talked about the technology that's ever evolving when it comes to tracking this stuff. We, we had talked about maybe someday having a, a fiber network out in the ocean to track this better. Uh, ever since we last talked, ha are there more sensors out in the water to track this type of thing? Or has it been re 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 relatively the same? It's relatively the same. We're playing maybe the long game in convincing funding agencies to uh, to support more undersea observations. There's a, actually a very uh, active amount of research going on on how we can use those seafloor communications cables as sensors that can detect earthquakes and tsunamis more rapidly and get a better handle on exactly what we expect to arrive as a hazard at the coast. So the research is going on, and hopefully that research will convince our governments to uh, to pay for that kind of activity. And, and Harold, I do have one more question before I let you go. How active was this volcano? We're so, we're seeing some satellite video of that. How active was this volcano? I mean, was it was it pretty dormant? Is it is was it active already? Do we know anything information about this in Tonga? Yeah, no, it has been an active volcano. It's a uh, undersea volcano um, almost entirely. Uh, and it had a, significant eruptions within the past decade, um, a number of them. Um, nothing, of, of course, at the scale of this. This is a really pretty substantial eruption, and we'll see what happened uh, and what comes forward. But um, it's a well-known, very active volcano. All right. Harold Tobin with the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Uh, Abby and I both appreciate your, your time yeah. here this morning.